There it goes. Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could join us once again. Today we're getting back in, in 1 John chapter 3. And uh, i got a couple questions for you to start off with. Have you ever asked yourself, is my answer to prayer of God or myself? Many times. Mm -hmm. Have you ever uh, asked yourself, how do I know mm -hmm. what path to take? Mm -hmm. See, well, I think today you're going to get your prayer answered because I think the Word's going to show us how we can be sure beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, so <coughs> let's let the Lord speak to us today with wisdom from our Heavenly Father. First uh, John chapter three, we'll pick it up where we left off in verse 18. It says, "My little children, let us not love in word." Neither in tongue, meaning in talk, but in deed and in truth. What does that mean to us? In everything we say and do. Our actions. Well, see... Your works. Yeah, your works. Just, you know, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Mm -hmm. um, and well, it's easy to say you love somebody. Everybody goes around and says, I love you, love you, love you. But the thing is, is what you do if that person is in need. The know. terminology that a lot of people uh, use today, especially in the military, walk the walk yeah, or talk, talk the, the talk. talk. You know, there's a lot of people who talk the talk. There's a lot of Christians today who, who know what words to say, know what verses to say. And, and, and it might really sound appropriate in many cases but the point is you look at their life and they're not walking the walk they're just saying the words they're not truly being Christian they say that they are but the thing is they don't live it see there's a lot of people have you ever heard the saying that I'm not sure if I remember the quote correctly that we may be the only Bible some people may ever read Exactly. It's because you'd be surprised how many people, once they learn that you're a Christian, watch your every move. They'll engage you too. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. But my mm -hmm. point being is that our Father wants us to say, look, you want to be a part of me, be a part of my life, and I am a part of you. You need to learn, not just to talk the talk. Just don't quote my verses. You need to learn how to live what my verses are saying. But thank, but, God, thank God for repentance, though, because there well, are some Well, of course, days. of course. We all make mistakes. But the thing is, it also says, and in truth. Ask yourself the question, what is truth? Christ was asked that question. Do you remember what he said? What truth was? I am the way and the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. See? Meaning, to do the things <coughs> that are written, to not just say them, not just say I'm going to do it. It's just like someone saying, well, I'm going to church on the next Sabbath, but they never show up. I'm going to read the Bible, but they may read it, but never study it. There's a difference. We all know that. A difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible. Studying the Bible, you absorb what it's saying. It may not be the whole chapter, but you absorb that verse. You absorb that thought. Does it also include doing it with a glad heart, that deed? Doing well, that's in another, that's in another uh, uh, book, but yes, mm -hmm. we want to do this with a glad heart because we're actually going to be talking about the heart in just a second. Listen, verse 19. And hereby we know, we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. Now, what, do, what does hearts also mean when you take it back to its original meaning? Mind. Mind. What you're thinking, see? And now, now, hear what it's saying here. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure, meaning encourage, our hearts, our minds before him. When we're doing the deeds, when we're doing the works, 
We can assure him. In other words, when we do what is right, not just say it, but when we do what is right, we are assuring our Father. He, he, he's, he knows our heart. He knows our mind. But we're showing him that we believe in what he is saying. That we believe in what, uh, these aren't just words to us. It's life. It's our life that we're dealing with. Verse 20 says, For if our heart or our mind condemn us, this is one you were talking about. Mm -hmm. If our heart or mind condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. He understands all things. He not only knows what you're thinking, but he knows why you're thinking it. Hmm. Now, isn't that wild? Mm -hmm. No. So, we, we can make a lot of mistakes. Not that he wants us to, but he understands it. Why? Because he lived it. Not that he made the mistakes, but don't you think for one minute that when he came in the flesh, that his mind being in flesh had those fiery darts come at him? Had to. He was in the flesh. But he overrid all those. He never had an evil thought. So the point being, though, why did he come in the flesh? Well, well to defeat death. Well, those are the words. But also, to defeat death, meaning in us. Meaning all those negative thoughts. He's, he's not so strict now, or maybe ever was, but he's not so strict saying, oh, you had an evil thought, condemn him. No, those thoughts... He was in the world, came to him. He was, he was in the flesh. So he knows, he can understand what you're going through. See? You don't have a, a God that's so, so far out there that he can't understand what you're thinking. What's so great about this and about him is that he not only understands it, but he forgives you for it. Now that's, that's an awesome God. 21, Beloved, if our heart or our mind condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. Now, how can that happen? How can our minds not condemn us by what, we, what we've experienced? What our Father wants us to understand and learn, we need to learn how to rise above our flesh thinking. Overcome. Okay. Overcome it. In other words, another word for it is discipline. To discipline our thoughts. In other words, when those negative thoughts, and we all have them, I don't care who you are, when those negative thoughts come into your heart, come into your mind, your discipline by the spirit that dwells within you overrides it and says, that's not me. That's not my thinking. That's stupid. You know, that's, that's not who I am. That's not who I want to be. That's you becoming disciplined in the spirit, the spirit that dwells within you. See? And that's how you learn how to do this. Now, we've all been there. We still are at times. But isn't it getting a little easier? More practice it. Because you're becoming more disciplined. See? You're becoming more disciplined in it. I don't want to say easier, but I go there quicker. Or I come out of it quicker when I when I exactly there. exactly and you should that doesn't mean you're not going to have them you're going to have them as long as you're in the flesh and 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 sometimes I've I've had such thoughts about certain things and thinking that where is this coming from but it's like Father is telling me look this is the way the world is. And I want you to be prepared for it. Well, especially these days, with the frustration and anger that's in the world so much around us. Yeah. You know, it's like every time you walk out the door, you're coming head to head with it in yeah. one shape or another. Absolutely. Doesn't matter where you go. Absolutely. So if our heart condemn us, our mind condemn us, us not, then have we confidence towards God? In other words, 
once we discipline ourselves to the point, what does that give us? It gives us confidence, and we know what we know and why we know it. We know that we can overcome. We know that we're weak in flesh, but we can overcome the flesh. You know what a great confidence builder that is? That no matter what happens to us, no matter how many of them fiery darts come hailing at us, that through Christ in us, we can overcome every obstacle. And that's so comforting. Mm -hmm. That is so comforting. That we're not going to be duped by what's happening in this world. There's so many people right now that are duped. They're, they're just, they can be led astray so easily, so easily, just by word. And from perfect strangers. They'll believe perfect strangers over the word of God. That, to me and to you, that makes no sense. But it happens every day. Well, see, that is because we have confidence. We have confidence in him. We have confidence in his word. And we're learning that discipline as we, as we continue. 22 says... And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Now, that, that, isn't that a great thing to hear? But listen, there's a condition to that. Because we keep his commandments. We keep his commandments. And here's another condition. Do. We do those things that are pleasing in his sight. In other words, we, don't just, we just don't talk the talk. We walk the walk. Now, you say, well, wait a minute. I'm not keeping all his commandments. Why not? Why not? Because it's hard. What part of the commandments is hard to keep? Seriously. You know how hard it is to keep from killing somebody sometimes? <laughs> Have you ever killed anybody, Ross? No, but I didn't say I didn't No, 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 no. Let's, uh, let's, let's get down to the nitty-gritty here. It's hard. No, it's not. Read it's those good. commandments behind me. Here's a clue that I learned a long time ago. Don't carry? Don't carry. Okay. But change the words you're using. Instead of telling children, why don't you go play out in, in traffic, mm -hmm. you know, Find some other way to tell people the things that are bothering you. I mean, I have so many times when I'm out the store and stuff, I hear parents and they t they're talking to their kids, and I can't believe the things that are coming out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. And they're so frustrated, I guess, with everything going on. And, and you think if they just said something to them in a different, just chose different words, they might get a different reaction. Well. And feel a little less frustrated. Let's do it this way. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. Are you having any problems with that? Anybody? Putting a god before you? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, you know, I'd like to do something else today. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. No, nah, you don't do that. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Yeah, I try not to. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh, I might get 40 out of 52. I don't know. Honor thy father and thy mother. Yeah, Thou right. shalt not, it doesn't say kill, it says murder, phonions. Oh, I know. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I better not hear anybody saying that. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. That last one's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say they were hard. Yes, you did. You said it's not hard. No, it's, it's not impossible to kill. Well, I didn't it's say it's impossible. Said, I said yeah. it's hard. I didn't kill them. Well... Uh, May, I don't know. I, I don't covet anymore. I don't know if I ever did. I know that I did at one point in my life, and it made me miserable. Isn't he referencing, though, really what Jesus said as far as, like, well, it's getting ready to go into it, mm -hmm. paraphrasing, I think, mm -hmm. you know, about loving God, basically putting him first, and loving thy neighbor as thyself. That's, mm -hmm. that's what he's really referencing mm -hmm. here as far exactly. as the yeah. commandments to keep. Yeah. To basically, the, the commandment that he gave, mm -hmm. his last commandment, mm -hmm. to love thy brother as thyself. Mm -hmm. And they didn't understand what that meant. Mm. How about that? Well, we discussed this yeah. last week, did we well, not? The world doesn't understand uh -uh. what that means now. The world <laughs> doesn't understand God. 2,000 years later, still struggling, huh? Yes. Um, 
Where does it change from envy to covet? Envy is what I have a problem with. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. I'm jealous of what you got. Let me get that. You know, you In that context, it is because by coveting, you you want what your neighbor or, or yeah. someone else has. Well, they got some no, that's not all the time. Huh? Sometimes you're just envious because a person is able to do something that you aren't. Yeah. I wouldn't use the word envious. Uh, what's the other word? Covet. No. <laughs> Admire. Admire. Oh. No, there's a difference. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, there's nothing yeah. wrong. Like if if someone shows up and jealous. and some not yeah. jealous. See, jealous, jealous, envy, all that. Those are negative things, just like coveting. But the thing is, I believe that that there's nothing wrong in admiring what someone has acquired because they worked for it, you know. But the thing is, you're not losing. Well, they shouldn't have that. Who are they to have something? See, that, that is envy, and that, that, is, that is going negative towards them. But there's nothing wrong with admiring somebody. They got a, like, like I admire that guy up here with a two-story house. I, I, I would think, boy, wouldn't that make a great church in the basement? Hmm. But I, I don't, I'm not jealous over yeah. him. But I admire what he built there. That's great. But I understand what June's saying, though, because there was a time in my life where I went through that. I it used to depress me. What I think do? we all went through that maturing in the Christian. I was going to say, I was in my late 20s and I had a bad case of it. Mm -hmm. And it made me very unhappy. Well, it will make you unhappy because you're envying. Mm -hmm. You're not admiring. I had to and there's a difference that. between the two. That was about to kill me. It doesn't make me... Jealous or something? Yeah. Well, uh, then I think that you admire what they so what they make. So you like admire a guy's wife, just don't go to the adultery thing, right? Admire her in in <laughs> admire her in what category? <laughs> admire her in what category? Admire It depends on whether she's dressed or undressed. Okay, let's go there. I don't um, think it's a good thing. No, you can, you can, God created beautiful. I mean, the body. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether this camera's not. You're before God. Exactly. <laughs> not one of us in this room is dead in the flesh yet. And somebody's beautiful, male or female, you're going to know. That's it exactly. That's like if we go to the mall. We're walking around. And yeah. either one of us, but there's a good. young, attractive person, and that? they go by. And you're going to look at that person just because, no, 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 no just because well, admire beautiful. maybe a little bit little little. longer than looking, <laughs> okay? Let's listen. There's looking and staring. Exactly. Where have you been and what have you been doing? <laughs> All right, let's, 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 let's keep to the... Oh. <laughs> it's the degree. Here, yeah. look, it all boils down to the last three words in verse 22. Okay. In his sight. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, we've got to realize we're always in his sight. Mm -hmm. You can't con him. You, you, can, exactly. you can say, well, I'm not jealous. and I'm not." <laughs> Look, he knows your heart. He knows your mind. He knows what you're really thinking. And he wants you to realize, look, there's nothing wrong in, in looking at these things and all that, admiring what people have acquired mm -hmm. because they worked hard for it or whatever the case may be. But once you start lusting or becoming jealous or envious, that's where the sin comes in. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's a degree kind of thing. Because I could say to Becca, I like your shoes. Mm -hmm. But if five seconds from now I knock you over the head and take them from you, it's a big difference. Well, yeah. You know. All right, verse 23. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Now, tell me what Christian doesn't believe that. That's what makes him Christian. But listen, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. Mm -hmm. Now, a person's going to, you're always going to get this smart out. Well, you're supposed to love everybody. Uh -huh. Well, you kind of are. Yeah, love the right. sinner, hate well, that's the what sin. he said. Hate the sin, love the sinner. So, we talked about brethren last week. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean just the brethren? Or does that mean everybody? It means every soul that God created. Huh? Every soul that God created. Every soul. The word to love, every soul that God created. There was a thing about being from the womb. There was a reference to that word. 
the root of it, being that's born. That's being born into the flesh. Right. Flesh right. existence. That's our brother. No, because we're we all come from who? Eve. We all come no. from God. <laughs> oh, God. He created us. And the fact is, is that um, we have got to learn how to override our flesh thinking a lot of times in dealing with people. Mm -hmm. Trying to kill them. Well, kill is a strong word. Yeah, I know. But, but the point is, is that uh, there's a lot of people that we run into on a day-to-day -day basis that... Um, if we allow our flesh to do our thinking for us, we will behave badly. Exactly. I mean, that's the thing with using the terminology. It's just like being around a bunch of people that have the same kind of a mindset. You enter into that and you're with that group on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a very good chance you're going to pick up that same mindset, good or bad, in your daily walk. And you're going to carry it away with you in your home or and you don't even realize it or maybe even be in your home mm -hmm. you know with certain scenarios that I've seen families go through where especially when you have a family that's unevenly yoked mm -hmm. they're not on the same page by any means mm -hmm. and a person can they're exposed to that day and you know day in and day out day in and day out seven days a week whatever the case may be and they're exposed to certain behavior. And you can become desensitized to that behavior if you're not careful. If it's a ne I'm talking about negative behavior, of course. And you can, you know, at, at first you're overlooking it. Well, why? Why overlook it? It's your home. Why overlook it? Well, I want to keep peace in the yeah. family. What kind of peace? Where you become resentful along the way? See? We need to deal with everything through God's eyes. And let me tell you something. Sometimes you're going to have to step on toes. And you know before you open your mouth, it's going to step on toes. Well, that's not keeping peace in, in the household. No, that's bringing truth to the household. See? You say, well, that's just going to cause a bunch of resentment. That's not your concern. Your concern is to speak truth. It told us to, to not only deed, but an in truth, <coughs> which means you've got to be truthful to people. God's that great. does not mean that you speak to every stranger out there and, and like the guys with the bullhorns condemning people on the street corners that they're going to hell. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when... Certain behavior is going against God's truth, His word, and they're trying to enable you to jump on their bandwagon. That's when you've got to speak and your you mind. Know, sometimes when I got into this situation yesterday, and I get challenged, this this person challenges me. He'll make a broad statement. I think he's mad at God, but I forgot. At any rate, they'll challenge you. And, and, and I think they, they want you to stand. They don't want you to capitulate. Right. They may come at you and come at you and come at you repeatedly in the same manner. Mm -hmm. But they want you to stand. They want your answer to be the same. Mm -hmm. And the day that it's not, mm -hmm. you'll let that soul down. Oh, absolutely. And you also let God down, yeah. Yeah. which is the, the important one. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're completely right, Becca. So in verse 24, the uh, ending of the chapter, And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And even though it says him, this is meaning mankind, uh, mm -hmm. woman and man. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Why would he say he hath given us? Because there's all kinds of different spirits. I was actually thinking about this within the last 24 to 48 hours. I was getting pretty proud of myself for a couple things. And then he <laughs> That has nothing to do with you, Becca Jo. Yeah. It's all God. Yeah. And on your own, you wouldn't even think this way. 
So get over yourself. It's the spirit yeah. of humility yeah. that he gives us. Get over yourself. Well, that, servant, that servant mentality. Mm. He's going to get, we're going to continue in chapter 4 here in a second, but he's going to give us more insight in what he's talking about here. Because we need to know. We need, we, we need to know every moment of every day whether or not we're doing what God wants, what we want, because we want what God wants. It's what we're supposed to. Or is it just my flesh? Well, and here's, you just touched on what I was thinking. I was feeling good because I felt like, you know, I truly do want what God wants. I want to be pleasing and yada, yada, yada. And then it finally hit me. Well, that's not because of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he calls us. Fear in you. But you got to understand, though. We can say that until the cows come home. This is what he's been talking about here. It's what we do, right. not just what we think. But it begins by what you think. What you do is almost always preceded by what you think. No, no, I disagree. Okay. Because there's. Let me tell you why. In my book. There's a lot of people. <laughs> That, that do without thinking. Act, act talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. They act on feelings rather than thinking about yeah. things. Yeah. There's, there's a big, big difference between. Them. There's a big difference because there's there's so many people out there. When the stuff hits the fan, they revert back to acting a flesh nature. Which mm -hmm. is feeling based. Now, now these are people. A lot of them that have a church body. You know, they, they, they go to church and sit in pews and, and, and been doing it for years and years and years. But the thing is, they act like heathen. Well, I think when we get, <coughs> when we become angry about something, we all revert mm -hmm. back to that. For we can. Mm -hmm. yeah. But depending on how close you walk with Father and He and you is that you overcome that nature. See, that's the whole point of all this. The Lord knows you're going to, you're going to get angry. Christ got angry. But he did it in a righteous way. Righteous indignation. There's a difference between righteous indignation and just being angry. In other words, the anger, there's a godly purpose behind that anger. Yeah, but we're not righteous. So we can't have <laughs> righteous anger. Well, I disagree with that because what does righteous mean? It means you do what's right. So there are times that we do what's right. When you take Holy Communion, you are righteous. Let me tell you something. Yeah, but I ain't angry. You're righteous. So there are times in our lives, and I, I believe, and the longer we, we walk with him, that there are times in our lives that we are being more and more, doing more and more what is right. It's because it's now, it's becoming our second nature. It's, it's who we want to be for so, so long. Don't. Huh? It will drive you nuts. No, when you don't, yes, it <laughs> does drive you nuts. You crazy. But the, uh, I won't say nuts because that's kind of a no, mad thing. No, it will bother you to the well, degree it should that you bother fall you. on your face. It should. So it should. And in some instances, it will stop you from a behavior just knowing you're going to end up that exactly. way. Exactly. But you have to be specific, though. You, you said walking with God. It's not just the walking, it's spending time in his word. It's putting that gospel armor on day after day. That after is day walking after with day. him. Well, I know, but some people don't think that. They think just by praying that that means they're walking with God. I, I, for one, well, that's one, why he used that. the word in verse 18, but indeed. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's what you do, not what you say. Yeah, but I'm saying that a lot of people don't think that what you do means actual studying. Well, I can't, I can't speak for people's mentality. Good. I understand that, but I'm saying that, that there was a point in my walk that I thought walking with God just meant praying. It didn't involve spending time in the Word. That's because you were being mistaught. Mm -hmm. What, yeah. Shane? Oh, All right, let's continue in chapter 4 because this is important. We won't do the whole chapter, but... Beloved, believe not every spirit... But try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, see, a lot of people think spirits means holy spirits or evil spirits. 
Well, yes, it does mean that, but it doesn't mean something that you can't put your hands and see. A lot of people think spirits is just something that you, you can't see at all, but it is. Do you feel the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Do you feel at times an evil spirit? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, we, we know, or we're learning how to deal with those kinds of spirits, but our Father wants you to realize it's not necessarily in the, in the realm of what you can't see here. It's something that people have, are possessed with. Because it's talking about false prophets. Now this false prophets, what does it mean by false prophets? False teachers. Let me ask you a question. What does try mean? Okay, test. Mm -hmm. How would you test a person whether or not they're of God? That's a very important question. I don't know if we can get a full answer today, but uh, that's been a topic of discussion. Well, here's what I believe, because the Word teaches this, mm -hmm. that the way to test someone whether or not they are of God is whether or not they're speaking the truth, which means it comes from the Word of God in a proper understanding of the verse. That would require that you would know the truth to begin with. That's right. That's so what is, what is it the first thing that we got to do as a Christian? We've got to learn what the truth is before we can test it. Exactly. We've got to study the Word of God. Right. We can't get away from it. And here lies the problem in the world today. They don't want to take the time to study first. They well, and, and they're keeping in. them from it yeah. by not re uh, requiring them anymore to even bring the Scripture with them. I know. But they don't want to anyway, so that just works out good for them. Well, they put it up on the wall. Yeah. Or they hand out what, what Murray used to call a rag sheet. Yeah. Carrying their Bible might not go with their outfit. Well, really? whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever they're, that. Whatever <laughs> they're thinking, the point <laughs> is, without the Word, we can't have the truth. You don't want me to kill them, people. No. We can't have the truth. Now, why is it important kill to the take <laughs> the Word with you when you go to a place of worship. So you can study. Why is that? Imp well, we understand why that's important, but it's all, it's to test what you're okay. hearing. Prove it. In other words, this guy's up there, or girl, whatever the case may be, uh, thus saith the oh, Lord, blah, 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 blah. Well, you go to that verse, and you look at it, and you say, well, wait a minute now. That's not what that means. Hmm. That's not the subject, uh -huh. such as 1 Thessalonians. They're teaching about the rapture. <laughs> but the thing is, you go to 1 Thessalonians and you read the subject, the object in the article of the verse that they're quoting means nothing about that. What it means is where the dead are. That's what it means. It has nothing to do with the rapture. Or they're, they're talking about in the Garden of Eden and the apple. Causing people to sin. Well, you go to Genesis and you look up where they're talking about. You say, well, wait a minute now. I'm confused because I must have an obsolete Bible because mine doesn't have apple in it. No, you don't have an obsolete Bible. That's what the word, the word, the word apple isn't even in the book of Genesis. You can't find the word anywhere. But they use the word apple. Say. That's my point. The whole point is you take the word. That's No, you may not memorize every single word in this book. But the thing is, the book is here. It's just like we went out and got the uh, Rand McNally map because we needed a map to show us where we were and where we wanted to go. Well, that's what this is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is to show you where you are and where you want to go. Maybe even where you've been and where you want to get to. And it's all here. But the thing is, there's so many people today that are not teaching the truth anymore, and they've gotten away from this book. And they just, have you ever, in your own lives, had a verse that you liked, or loved, whichever the case may be, and you'd quote it, and you'd quote it, and over the years you'd quote it, and you'd quote it, and all of a sudden you go back, to that, that same verse years later and all of a sudden he said, well, I'm not quoting it exactly how it's written anymore. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, and it's not Man, intentionally. It means something different than what you thought. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Or a deeper understanding yeah. of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To me. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because the word grows as you grow. It's the same words. It's the same verse. But you have matured on a deeper level of understanding. Just like building a house. Can't start with the roof. But a lot of people want. Have you ever been asked a deep question? Mm -hmm. A deep question by people. Which, which is really a nice question. But the thing is, they don't have anything to stand on with that. To understand what that answer is going to mean to them. Right. That was the whole point of this. How do you try a spirit? They want the quick answer for y'all. You have an app for that. Yeah. Can you can you download something and now just hold it up? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to study. Yeah, just give me. The I question. just I just want the answer. Yeah. Well, you won't understand the answer if you don't study. It's as simple as that. See, that's why Satan attacked in the book of Genesis from the very get go, because if he could tweak it, that's why that's why the apple is so important. Because even though it's not in the Word of God, the apple is a tweak of the truth. And Satan knew if he could attack at young ages from the very mm -hmm. beginning, if he could get that seed in there, that evil seed, that, that misteaching, the rest of it he had no problem with. Mm -hmm. See? And that's what it means, test the spirit. Mm -hmm. No, test these people. Don't just take them because they got a collar turned around backwards or, or they're behind a pew or, or whatever the case may be. Or they got DD or DDS or BA or BS, whatever the case may be, behind their names. It means nothing. You test what they're saying. That's why I've said it. Murray said it. And as far as uh, uh, all of them in Murray's clan, if you will, say the same thing. Don't believe me or any other man. You believe the word of God. Mm -hmm. And even Christ, talking about the Pharisee and the Sadducee, told them. He says, look, you listen to... Now remember, he called them hypocrites. Mm -hmm. But he told the people, look, you listen to what they say, but you don't do what they do. Mm -hmm. Because what they were saying... That doesn't mean what they were saying on, on, on the footsteps. Because they didn't. It's when they were reading the Torah. They were reading the word. You listen to what they say, but you don't do what they do, because they were being hypocrites. <laughs> so you test that spirit. Mm -hmm. Hereby, verse 2, know ye the spirit of God. That's how you're going to know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Now, that's a big one. It is. That's a big one. Because there's a lot of people that believe that God came in, in, through Christ Jesus. But guess what? There's not a lot of people teaching that he actually became flesh man. They're not. Not anymore. Hmm. Not anymore. Do you believe... I mean, do you, this is going to blow your mind. There's a lot of seminaries today that are telling their new fledglings not even to teach about the cross. Really? Don't teach about the blood on the cross because it will offend the congregation. That's so it's sad. too bloody. Mm -hmm. Don't get involved in that. Steer away from that. And that's the whole purpose of being a Christian. It is sad, mm -hmm. but it's truth. Verse 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. And a form of Antichrist is in the world. And it's going to continue in the world. That's false doctrine, folks. That's what it comes down to, what we, the terminology we, we would use today. And what is false doctrine? False doctrine is people teaching that it's of God, but it's not of God because it's not in the Word. See, that's, again, how you try the Spirit. You try the Spirit because you've got to be able to go to the Word and document it for yourself. But you can't if you don't know... 
where to go. And the, there's been times in the past, some other churches, that I would say, let us go to such and such book. And, and man, I'd have to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for them to look. Is that the first, the Old or the New Testament? Either one. No, I'm saying that's the first question. Oh, no, they don't No, they don't want to ask oh, a question because okay. they, they don't want to sound ignorant. I know. So I basically finally tell them, look, go, oh, go to the front of your Bible and look up where it's at. They have a kind of contents at the front? Yeah, they got contents at the front. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, you did. Verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, that have overcome them. Over Who's them? The yeah, those of the world. Those of the world. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So greater is God than anything of this world. We, we can all agree with that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? There's a lot of people that don't. Mm -hmm. They question God on every turn. They believe what this world will give them, what this world will tell them, over what God has declared unto them. That's, the, that's unbelievable to me, but the thing is, it's truth. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, get some, you get some Yahoo on the boob tube over here, and they'll believe what they say about God rather than what God says about them. Verse 5, They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world. That's why they say the things that they do, because they're of the world. It should not take you five seconds in talking with someone, whether or not they're of God or they're of the world, by what they speak, and how they speak, and the way they speak it. And the world heareth them. Of course the world heareth them. They'll follow what they say. Why? Because they're all in the same pot. Here, here comes you, little old you, <laughs> you know, coming out with a, 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 a statement of truth, and they look at you like you're, you're from Venus or something. Yeah. Because they're of the world. They can't comprehend. Or they poo-poo you, or whatever the case may be. They look at you like you're, you're, you're crazy. How can you come up with such things? Why do you think such things? That's, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Because they're of the world. They think that way. And let's face it, we were all of the world. How do I know? Because we were born into it. What is the world? The world is, is what the flesh wants, when it wants, and how it wants it. And that's all it thinks about. It doesn't think about anything else except self. Just like a baby. A baby needs. All a baby wants is fed and changed. That's it. <laughs> well, of course, but it learns that. It, it learns that, 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 that closeness. You know. But the thing is, it can also learn hate along the way by how it's treated. And, and if a person is treated of the world, it learns to be of the world. Why? Because that's all we know. We don't know anything else. But God loves us so much, he's not going to allow us to wallow in that state. And we all have different avenues that we've traveled where Christ has called us. We've all have, we all have, it's not the same story, but it's the same ending. Mm -hmm. Where he's all called us, and, and he's taught us that there is more, there's more to it than what's coming at us by the world. There's so much more. At first, it was just a little glimmer in our thinking. But that was a glimmer that has turned into a raging fire with us. And nothing is going to tear it from us. Yeah. Nothing's going to tear that truth from us. But the world keeps trying, doesn't it? Well, it's almost funny. It's almost entertaining. It is now. Almost. But it almost. wasn't when we were going through it. <laughs> it was a turmoil. Yeah. It was a it was a conflicting thinking process of what we're experiencing. You know, uh, the, well, I don't want to give this up. 
what's wrong with this? And you, you can put whatever thing it is as this is in your life. Well, it's not only that. It's, it's when you allow those fiery darts of Satan to enter in. Like, who are you? Who are you to be doing this? Why do you think you deserve this? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. can't you know? You could do better. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, those enter in, especially when we're tired or we're, we're just, you know, we're not, we're not spending time in the Word. Yeah. So. Verse four. Mm -hmm. I did right. Mm -hmm. Verse mm -hmm. five. No. no, no. Six. six. Yeah, you're running on. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Don't overlook that. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not, not us. Hereby, no. In other words, we recognize we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. That tells you. This tells you. This documents to you. How you can tell right from wrong, a good spirit from a bad spirit, which is what? What is this basically telling you? That when you're of God, you have godly discernment. You should be able to tell in talking with someone whether or not they're of the world, whether they're not of, of evil, or they're of God. Now, that doesn't mean they have all the same understanding that you do and that doesn't mean that you have all the understanding that they have but what you do have you have the Spirit of God within you that is telling you that this person is of God or is not of God because after all why was the three and a half year tribulation shortened to a five month period for the elect's sake. For the elect's sake. But why? Because they, Satan yeah. is so deceiving. He's so subtle in the way how he deals with people that if allowed to continue, even the elect would succumb to it if going over a long period of time. So this tells us that, that we need to learn along the way now, I hate using the term judgment, because I'm not talking about judgment to hell. I'm talking about we need to know how to judge whether or not what we're hearing is truth or false. Have you ever turned on the boob tube and listened to some guy, and you're listening, and man, you're going, man, this guy's got it down. I mean, he's, he's sounding good. And you're listening and listening, and maybe even it might be three or four lectures down the road, all of a sudden he starts tweaking it. He starts, and you're, you're, you're hearing this, and you're going, oh, my goodness, did he have me duped. Mm -hmm. have, has that ever happened to you? Oh, yeah. Sure has happened to me. Oh. You know, and I'm constantly searching for someone out there that, that has that, that, who gets it. But I tell myself, like I've told Donna, and I'll tell you, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Oh. In other words, he may have come up with a lot of good stuff. He may just not have learned enough yet to have it all. Just like we all about How to get past over right. Exactly. We, we're trying to do the right thing. We had about 90% of it right. but At least we we're on that path knowing that we want to do what's right, such as Pentecost. I'm going to be doing a lecture probably. Don't, don't hold me down to this, but I'm thinking about it, of um, all the high holy days and which ones we're supposed to follow and which ones were nailed to the cross. And I think that may come up for Pentecost or just prior to Pentecost. Because Pentecost, according to the Word, is one of the three high holy days that we are to keep. Now, whether you keep them or not, that's up to you, but that's what the Word says. So, food for thought for what's coming. Verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. Now, some people say, well, we're all born of God. Yeah, but what happens... I think something's happened before we're born of God. 
Wouldn't the phrase born of God don't be more like born again? Well, not actually the, born womb, actually born again is the way it's written in English. Yeah. But how it's written yeah, in the born from above. Of God. Yeah. What I was getting at. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not just born from the womb. Exactly. But when we're born of God, we're a spirit at that same time. Right. right. I heard a, right. a teacher touch on this, and I thought it was interesting. Um, this very verse, and he mm -hmm. said, that you, the one where it goes, you must be born of water mm. in the word. And if you stop to think of it, everyone that's born in the flesh comes through water. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. You're born of water that yeah. way as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I had never thought of that. Yeah, you water breaks. When does the Spirit come to people? When? In the yeah. womb. I don't know. Well, according to the Word, it's in the womb. Okay. And as a mother, I can tell you it's in the womb. When you feel that, that oh. light in you. <laughs> you. Okay. Spirit, you weren't, you weren't talking about the Holy Spirit. No, oh, okay. God's spirit. Okay, gotcha. Is there a difference between I, Holy Spirit and God's spirit? I, yeah, I got it. No, I don't think so. Well, it's a different subject for a different time. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what's Pentecost? The filling of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to mankind. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, if the Holy Spirit's already with them, why did it have to come to them? Because it wasn't with them. No. Wasn't was it with some? He gave them the Ruach. And that was set apart from the heart that God gives you. You mean Moses didn't have the Holy Spirit? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get yeah, in. We'll it, this, is, this is really a different subject, which we'll spend time on, especially when we get to... It was more selective back then, right? <clears throat> it was given to everybody. We'll, we'll get into it. I mean, that, that's a whole... That's a deep that's subject. A lot yes, you know that? yes, Jim. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, this born in verse 7. I know that born and begotten is the same word. Mm -hmm. Could this be begotten instead of born? No. No, it's born. It's born. No. Born of God. Okay. Now, the only way I know how to teach this, which I can't document. And I'm telling you I can't document because I can't document it. But we all know that we started with God. Mm -hmm. We all know that we were with God in the first earth, first heaven age. I believe that some people followed God and some people followed Satan. How do I know that? Because that's written. No. A third of, of God's children followed Satan. It's written in the Word. Mm -hmm. So I believe how God uses that to be born into the flesh, I think, follows you. In other words, you got, you got a bad seed. You got you got kids today. I mean, they're bad from the get go, and they and some of them were raised in perfectly good Christian homes, documented. But they were just total evil seed from the get go. That's the only way I can look at this. Is that that doesn't mean that anybody can't change. Anybody can come to the Lord Jesus Christ at any time. However. I believe that the the uh, what's what's the terminology? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, mm. and I think that's what happens. Even though we're born in flesh and our minds are erased from the first earth, first heaven age, I believe that 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 goodness or that hatred follows us. And again, I can't document that, but looking at what's happening today. And the way some of these kids are behaving, and they behave from the get-go that way. That's why I believe what I believe, yes. Um, in the companion, it does say that born is the same as begotten. Well, we, we said that, didn't we? I thought June asked you that, and you said no, it wasn't. No, we weren't talking about born, were we? Yeah. She asked if born here was could have, also been begotten. Be, should be begotten. You said no, it was born. Well, it's written born in the, in the mm -hmm. I don't care what it says there. But well, I'm just saying, is it, is it, that's what it says in the transcripts. Is born. Well, maybe it is the same, but it's written born in the old, that's what I'm asking. old, old Taking writing. Taking it back, right. So maybe the definition means begotten. Yeah. But it's written born in the ancient uh -huh. language. That's what I'm going to check that because that would be a question. Well, thank well, you for clarifying. Right.
Verse 8, just testing you. Yeah. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Mm -hmm. means you can't go through life hating people. No. You can hate sin, like uh, Donna said earlier. You can hate the sin, but you love the sinner. You love what God created, that soul. That soul that he created, that's what you love. Verse 9, And this was manifested, meaning revealed, the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And, and, and the fact is, we believe that, we trust in that. And the thing is, if we believe he did that, that, that kind of love, then we need to believe what he's talking about with loving one another. You don't just love a person because they're going to the same church you are. Mm -hmm. well, and a lot of people won't. They despise. You know how many churches <laughs> despise one another? Yes. Oh, my goodness. They'll be like them people across the street. Wars fought over. Huh? Wars, yeah. yeah. Wars have been fought over there. Still fighting. Still are. <laughs> yeah. Verse 10. Mm. Here in his love. And we'll end with this. Okay. Here in his love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. Oh, Lord. What does that mean? I don't know. Are ransom? You, huh? Ransom? Does that mean he was the ransom for us? Orange. Yeah. He paid the price for our sins. That's what propitiation means? Yeah. He paid the price. Hmm. Yeah. We... To, to truly understand love, we've got to understand God's love. Did he hang on the cross just for the people there? Or did he hang on the cross for every sin that would ever be committed for all the generations that would follow? Meaning he loved every entity that would come upon this planet. A never-ending love. And if we believe that, then we should love everyone. Now, is that easy or is that hard? Well, I, I got the last three wrong, so I'll say <laughs> <laughs> it sounds hard to me. What does propitiation mean? Price. Price. I think it's pretty hard. It is for me. Well, it's, it's hard to love someone who's in your face giving you down the road. <laughs> it's hard to love someone that is trying to take the truth that you're giving them and twisting it and manipulating it to, to be a falsehood. Now, does God hate? Well, the Word says He does. He hates sin. He hates sin. Mm -hmm. well, we're supposed to love everybody. Yes, never. it doesn't say anywhere in the Word that he doesn't love his children. But he hates what some of them are doing. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong in us hating what someone is doing if it's evil, if it goes completely against God. But we're not hating the person, we're hating the action. We're hating what they're doing. We may even be hating what they're saying, but we don't hate the person. In other words, we learn how to overcome the flesh nature. The flesh nature wants us to hate. But the spirit that dwells within us wants us to love that person. And sometimes that love is what Murray calls, and I believe it to be true, called tough love. And that tough love is, is that Sometimes you've got to tell them like it is, knowing that they're not going to accept it. Sometimes, though, when their actions, it's hard to look past because they're so obnoxious. Okay. That, you know, and, and All right, let, let's take the worst of the worst. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Let's take, in my opinion, the worst of the worst, child molesters. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know. I didn't want you to go that far. <laughs> well, no. It's a biggie, right? Yes. Very much so. We're supposed to love them. But how do you love them? What's the, what's the best... Let's just take a... Forget about all the stuff that's actually happened. 
let's just take a fictitious person who's a child molester, a convicted child molester, rightly convicted now. What's the best way to love them? Put them in jail. Send no. them to God and let him take them. Send them to God and let <laughs> him. Oh, I can love because them. that's... <laughs> no, listen to me. Because that is tough love. That is actually following what the Word says to do. The world won't let you do that. Well, the world is, well, think of the world. See, that's the point. Right, but the world won't, the world will lock you up if you take a child molester and send him up to God. No, 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 <laughs> a number, not, another one, we have to do things by, according to the law. Right. The law of the world? Man's yeah, law. yeah, that's right. We're in the okay. flesh. <laughs> Follow the, the law of the land. That's what the word says. It does it? The only time that we go against the law of the land is when it goes against the word of God. Thank you. However, that would be going against the word of God. But the point is, does God want you to be in prison for the rest of your life? No, I don't think so. Yes. We know that love means charity, right? They're, they're interchangeable between the two. So wouldn't that refer back to First Corinthians? 13? That's called the love chapter. Yeah. That's the one I use at all weddings. I mean, isn't that how, love God, is kind. how God loves us, basically? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and he, that's how he expects us to love. One another. One another. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's chapter and verse. Um, first it's several verses. Well, the one that speaks the love is uh, suffering, all and all that is chapter 13. In I call it the love chapter. That's the one I use at all weddings, unless they don't want it. Want it. it talks about charity being love. But the point is, is that God became love by giving his life for mankind. And he expects no less of us. And, and that's, that's where we'll end today. Are there any questions? To God be the glory.